The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM. We have some inflationary data in the CPI this morning. We got a hot print in the markets taking it and running with it to the negative side as the probability of a 50 basis point hike in March. You're March, you're talking about 50-50 basically priced in. We're either getting a quarter point or we're getting a 50 basis point hike in March. We weren't even talking about March not that long ago, but man, you're talking about inflationary numbers month over month. 0.6% versus 0.4%. You annualize just the month of January and you're talking about 7.2%. That's an accelerating number. We'll take a look at it in a moment, but starting off with the market, you got the S&Ps basically accelerating, sitting near pre-market session lows. You're down 55 points right now. That's 1.2% on the S&Ps trading at 45.23. NASDAQ 100, you drop a solid 1.9% right now, 14,763. We were trading about 15,000 before that print. Dow off 214, you're only negative by about six tenths percent. Growth stocks getting hit in a rising yield environment. You got the Russell off 1.8 percent as well. Bitcoin trading with the market off 1500 bucks off 3.3 percent. You just dropped about two thousand dollars in the price of Bitcoin from where you were trading at 830 this morning. Crude dropping as well. You get the gold contract having some volatility. You were up to 1838 just like that. We're back negative eight dollars at 1828 in the price of gold and we are coming very close to a two percent ten year yield right now. You take a look at the ten year. You drop 20 ticks that are thereabouts on that news number and you're talking about a yield just about as close as you can get as I speak, folks, and we're probably going to hit it uh, on this tick. 1.998%. That's as close as you can get. Uh, and there we go. The headline comes across, as I say, it tops 2% for the first time since 2019. There's your print for you, folks. We got inflation. You got the 2%. You got the 10 year rising above 2% for the first time since 2019. And let's jump over to the headline numbers. Inflation charges higher with larger than forecast gain. <clears throat> now, here's the thing the forecast was for 0.4% month over month, comes in at 0.6. It was also for, by, I believe, 7.2 or 7.3% year over year. That number comes in at 7.5% year over year. You take out food and energy, the core number, 0.6%. Uh, no, excuse me. Yes, 6% and 0.6% from a month earlier. So even taking out food and energy prices, you have a core number rising 0.6% from a month earlier. Now, you just take a look at the front page of Bloomberg, man. That chart, right? It's remarkable to think that you back things up to whether it was 2020, even the start of 2021, you were talking about 1.4%. This thing is a straight shot upwards, folks. It is accelerating, and it is accelerating on a monthly basis. You're at 7.5%, highest print since 1982. We knew we were going to get that number. But our man Kevin Hanks, we'll be talking to him coming up at 7.15, uh, excuse me, 9.15. And as he was saying yesterday, the month over month number, we knew the previous 11 months, but that month over month number, man, 0.6%, you're seeing a rise in the probability that we get 50 basis points coming at us in March. Now, what's interesting is we get one more CPI print. We get that data, I believe, March 10th. Let's see when March 10th lines up. Yeah, that's probably going to be it. It's going to be the Thursday of the second week into March. We're going to get the numbers for February. You're going to get a CPI print on that number, and then you get a Fed meeting the following week, March. I believe it's March 15th to 16th. Really interesting. That number, put it on your calendar, folks, March 10th. Uh, that's going to be the day we get the final CPI print. And, man, you get another print that's hot. I think it's 50 basis points. How can you not? You see what we're talking about. The Fed's looking at that chart as well. Consumer prices surge. You get an accelerating number again. 50 basis points is coming. Now, you can make the argument that the market's aware of that. But boy, 60 points in the S&P 
2.1% in the NASDAQ 100 as things are really accelerating here. Uh, the market may be readjusting the probability that the Fed may have to act quicker than they would like as you have a number that is rising on a monthly basis, accelerating inflation tendencies even in the month of January. Remarkable action. We'll see where we open. We got 19 minutes until the open, folks. Now, everything, context is important. You're only back in the NASDAQ 100 to where we were trading at. I mean, you're actually 200 points above where we were trading at 48 hours ago, right? Do you remember the conversation? We were talking Tuesday. I remember people in the den uh, and people across the internet, folks, in the financial spectrum saying, you know, maybe we kind of just wait until CPI data, right? Maybe the calm before the storm. Well, the NASDAQ 100 is 200 points above where we were trading at Tuesday when some were talking about those sentiments, and they were fair sentiments. We had quite an acceleration. Tuesday didn't stop until Wednesday. You know, not, this is nothing, folks, if you think the market is throwing a hissy fit right now. We're back to just where we closed out Tuesday action, 200 points above where we started Tuesday action. And basically, we're just back to where we started the week. I mean, if you told us on Friday that you're going to get a hot CPI number, but we're going to be flat for the week so far. I think you'd take that. So keep that in mind, the context of where we are. Because if you really think the market had not priced in the probability that 50 basis points is coming at you, there's going to be some more selling, I anticipate, on the open. All right. So I was talking about the point of 50, 50 a uh, 50% chance now that there will be a 50 basis point hike in March. I'll get it out. Half point Fed hike in March is a coin flip. That's an easier way to put it. After the hot inflation number, uh, money markets ramped up their expectations for the pace of a Federal Reserve tightening after the inflation figures we just talked about. Yes, so they are pricing in now. Let's just read it because that's where it came in. Briefly pricing in a supersized half point hike next month as more than one in two chance and fully pricing in a full percentage point increase by the end of July. So they are pricing in a full percentage point increase by the end of July. That equates to a 25 basis point increase at each of the next four policy meetings. That's what's being priced in. Okay, here's your pre CPI estimates, here's your post CPI estimates. They're still in there, you might have a little wiggle room, um, but I imagine that they're going up and whether we go up 50 basis points, it's really quite a conversation, folks, if we know they're going up so fast that the only equation that we haven't figured out yet is whether they start with two rate hikes in March. Now, here's what I'll say. If it's so imperative that 50 basis points have to come in March, why wait until March? It's something to think about. Um, if it's that dire that you can't just raise 25 basis points, why the need to wait? Now, I'm not really saying that they're going to come ahead of time. What I'm really saying is, is if, if the Fed can wait until March, maybe they think they have the time to just begin hiking at every meeting for a quarter basis points. There's also the argument out there that is 50 basis points really going to have the impact they want it to versus just the statement that they are trying to shock the market? Not sure that's what Chairman Powell uh, wants to do. But boy, this market, it's paying attention and probably rightfully so because that is a hot print. And I did not expect a hot print, but it makes sense when you think about, man, we got some big jobs numbers coming out of January as well. We almost beat by like a million jobs. Now you're talking about we have a beat on a huge fashion on jobs and we have a beat in pretty dramatic fashion on inflation numbers and the market waking up to the fact that guess what? We got four rate hikes coming. By July, four out of four, and we might even get five rate hikes in four meetings. That's a 50 50 shot your month from where we've been. Stay tuned, folks. Come back to our man, Kevin Hanks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S and P's down about 57 points right now. You're trading down 1.2 percent. Nasdaq 100. You're down near about 2 percent on the dot right now. Trading down 293 points. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network. Fast market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and the team. They break down the day's market action. They talk in defined risk, talk in options, talking a little bit of inflation this morning. Kevin, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, this is going to be an interesting day. Uh, we're, you know, it'll it'll see it, it'll be very interesting to see how this market uh, absorbs this news, because obviously traders are going to have news on and the headline news. They're going to beat you over the head with these year over year numbers. Right. And seven and a half percent on the headline was higher than last month and higher than the consensus. 6% on the excluding energy was higher than last month and higher than the consensus. But the month over month numbers in the, in the CPI, the CPI was a 10th worse 0.6 versus 0.5. The core was a 10th worse 0.6 versus 0.5. Uh, the 10 year yield just hit 2% and backed off. So I think this day, Tommy, in my opinion, I think the, the CPI numbers were warm, but not hot. And, some of the reasons the, 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 these numbers were were warm, Tommy. Fuel oil up nine and a half percent in a month, forty six percent for the year. Energy prices up two point nine percent. Electricity up four point two percent. And here it comes again: used cars and trucks up one point five percent and forty percent in the last year. Used cars and trucks up forty percent. Let that sink in and understand that it's energy. It's used cars and trucks. If both those start to come down, so is inflation going to come down, Tommy. So I think this is going to be a really interesting day to trade these markets and see how this market consumes and digests this information. Because once you look into the numbers, it's really quite um, concentrated where some of these inflationary pressures are, Tommy. You make some great points, man. I was watching that monthly number from talking to you uh, in particular, and it's a little bit of a hot number. But I was also adding some context like you are, Kevin. I said, you know, um, I even... 
talked about it briefly yesterday. I said, you know, some of some of the traders we got in the Tigers den, the YouTube Tigers den over there, new traders coming in, maybe even on Tuesday, because it was such an important number on Thursday, saying, you know, do we kind of calm down on Tuesday, on Tuesday morning? You could see that happening, right? You could have had a couple calm days going into a big CPI number. Well, in context, Kevin, we're sitting right now 50 points in the S&Ps above where we were Tuesday morning. Uh, you're sitting 200 points above in the NASDAQ 100. So if this was really a game changer, um, there would at least, I imagine, be more movement today. And it's going to be an interesting one, as you say. Uh, jumping over to Disney. So I was watching Fast Market yesterday, and uh, hopefully I'm going to get his name, the last one, Nick Theodorakis. Uh, he was Nick on there, and he made a point, right. man, and, and I was relating uh, he had friends that had just unfortunately gotten COVID, right? You get over COVID though, you're vaccinated as well. You got like super immunity out there. My family had just gone through something similar, Kevin. They were saying, where do they go? They went to Disney. You know what kind of conversations we're having in my family, Kevin? When are we going to Disney, man? Isn't that, that's so I just really related. And I was saying to my subscribers, I'm just relaying this information to you. And we're going to jump over to Disney. It's not like I'm the only one thinking that, obviously, with how they did in the parks in particular. But isn't that cool, Kevin, um, of how that kind of relates and how you can see personal experiences sometimes and really the breakout here in terms of the reopen trade. You got some of the travel stocks, Disney, Uber beating last night as well. Um, you have the airlines trading a little bit higher. What do you think about the Disney numbers last night? Pretty strong action. Exactly right. And, you know, we talked about that, how so, so cool. many parts of Disney are doing well or better, yet this stock was getting discounted because of Disney Plus growth numbers. And, boy, Disney Plus growth numbers are such a one part of this massive company, especially when all these parks are opening and the ships are sailing and uh, all these different parts are, are, are working or firing back up. So, you know, Disney... Remember, Tommy, this stock traded not very long ago two hundred and three dollars, and it got down to one twenty nine. Now it's you know over one fifty five here to start the day. But you know Disney is an amazing company, and it's a rite of passage, Tommy, for young parents to take young or even uh, adolescent children to Disney. One advice, Tommy: two days, not three. Remember that <laughs> from an old parent. Well, <laughs> thankfully, I don't think they told my dad that, man, because I got spoiled. I, I, I had two days, three day trips, man. I, I was I didn't oh. understand, Kevin, that you would come to the state of Florida and not go to Disney. Uh, what was the point as a young child? So so that was that was I had it made, man. And it is interesting. I'm only about an hour from Disney right now. And you see how it can change so much, just even personally, folks, because the conversation about Disney, we have two kids that were not vaccinated in the house. We we're just trying to get through, maybe get them vaccinated, hold off from the bigger areas of large crowds. I know that some people are comfortable and that's totally cool. But getting back to that full engine, Kevin, of the place operating on, you know, that we all know the Disney that just is like lines and business and you're paying $15 for a drink, right? And $20 for a snack. Um, those conversations are taking place in my house. They're taking place in Nick's house, like you were talking about on the program yesterday, his friend's house, and uh, you're seeing it in the numbers. It's pretty cool. So we go from Disney, Kevin. We have earnings still coming out, but what are you guys talking about? I'm sure you're going to break down some of the action with the S&P negative 57 to kick things off, but uh, any equities on the menu today you'll be talking about? Sure. We're going to look at Expedia, a uh, travel company with everything going on and reopening, and then we'll look at the buy now, pay later firm, a firm. Uh, and see how they're doing. Remember, Peloton is their biggest customer. And then we'll look in the third block. We always try to look at some something high profile. Today, Netflix. Ah, three good ones, man. That affirmed the whole trend to to installment payments, buy now, pay later. Pretty interesting, the type of credit um, as that transitions. But man, that stock, right? From 176 down, we're sitting at 74 bucks, even getting a pop uh, recently. Well, Kevin. We look forward to the program as always. Should be an interesting one today, man. We appreciate the education and we'll be watching at 12 noon today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. You too. Kevin, uh, folks, tune in every trading day. It's going to be a good one. Expedia, I was talking about uh, travel. I mean, check out this chart, folks. You're pushing basically on a weekly basis 
Is that all time highs? I think it is. It sure is. 196. Uh, pay attention to this reopening on the travel, folks, because we're seeing a rotation here. Uh, how long that rotation takes? There is a long way to go for some of these companies. I mean, you just even pull up international airlines. They might not even benefit the most as you're still dealing with some some woes internationally, especially international travel, maybe a little bit slower. Uh, but Delta Airlines was at 52 a year ago. You're sitting at 43. A company like Boeing sitting at 212 right now. I mean, Europe prices in Boeing, you were trading at almost two years ago, June, after post-pandemic levels uh, at prices in Boeing. And then you get into some of the companies with growth and exposure. Airbnb, you were just trading at 210, let alone 219 in the beginning of 2021. You're trading at 170, up from 140. And uh, Expedia. 199 making new all-time highs pretty interesting how that reopening trade goes okay folks we got three minutes to go until the opening bell we got the s p's down 1.3 percent to kick things off as i mentioned some context still well above where we were to start the week but boy this drop let's put it on a minute basis to see the action it's one a one-way drop folks we've been settling for about the last 20 minutes at this price level just waiting for that opening bell stay tuned i'll be right back Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Well, welcome back, folks. We have markets open and we get the S&Ps popping a few points on that open right now. We're still negative 55 points, negative 1.2 percent. NASDAQ 100, negative 1.9 percent. You're sitting right near session lows, Dow off 234. That's just off two thirds percent in the Dow. We jump over to the stocks with earnings this morning. Disney. Catching a bid, probably hampered down by the market action this morning as you were pushing 159 pre-market. Right now, Disney still up 6.2%. We'll get into the details of their numbers shortly. Some strong, strong numbers, especially on the parks business and on the Disney Plus subscriber basis because Netflix missing in a big way could put some worry in there, but they got it done. Disney uh, will jump into their numbers. You also had Uber out with their numbers last night, giving back some of the gains. Uber's up 1.7% right now. A couple of other companies will jump too. You had Mattel out with their numbers uh, up about 4% from Mattel. You had MGM trading higher. It gives back some of the gains with a negative market action. MGM off 1.5% to kick things off. Okay, jumping around for a brief moment. Uh, the headline number, as we talked about, 7.5%. That's what you're going to see. Core number rising at 6%. 0.6% from a month earlier. Uh, it's a pretty hot number. When you annualize that number, if you just grow at 0.6%, Folks, it only takes three months of doing that, and you're at your yearly cap if the Fed wants 2%. The other way to put it, you annualize it, you're talking about 7.2% just at the pace in the last 30 days. And you have to remember that that is rising December versus January. December prices were already up dramatically. And you had a 0.6% rise versus December. The Fed got to be a little worried. Now, here's what I'll say about the talk of 50 basis points. I don't envision that Chairman Powell is that freaked out yet. And if he is, you have to understand that it might even come quicker than that. Because if this is such a hot print, wouldn't you have to maybe even up the timetable a bit? Their next meeting is March that they are considering it. You're going to get one more CPI print. Um, so if they're waiting, yeah, we get a super hot print. I don't know. It's going to be a 50-50. Interesting action. But when you look at this market, uh, the market is already aware, I would say, that there's seven to eight rate hikes coming over the next two years. So whether that begins with 50 basis points or not, it's not a dramatic shift over the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, look at where we're sitting in relation to all-time highs. Look where we're sitting compared to where you were trading at in the S&Ps just January 28th almost 300 points above where we were okay all things in context sitting relatively near that level right now i don't imagine the 50 basis points is where we go right now but even if we do the titanic the, uh, the titanic shift you could say in terms of the thinking it's not a huge shift in thinking because the market is really pricing in now this sell-off from january 4th down to january 26th was the market figuring out that rate hikes were coming chairman powell told us that rate hikes were coming they were coming in a much stronger fashion because of the strength of the economy. We get that very strong jobs print for January, and then we have a hot inflation number to go with it. So keep that in mind. They are coming. The market knows they're coming, though. That's what to keep in mind as well. Ten-year yield sitting at 2.0% uh, right now. What are we sitting at? 1.991. We're under that level. 1.991, as Kevin mentioned. We give it back slightly. Okay, jumping over to the Disney numbers. So, We'll pull up the headline first. Disney earnings surge gives boost to their CEO. He's been on the job for two years now. Uh, quite a time to take over right before the pandemic hits. Subscribers to Disney Plus increased by 11.8 million in the quarter. You can see how they still have some room to run compared to Netflix that struggled. Uh, their CEO was out there getting interviewed. I saw him on Bloomberg last night at about 545 Eastern time. I think he was probably on other networks as well. Um, but he was talking about the, listen, they had talked about the growth isn't going to be linear there. The, and I'm giving you the bull case. We have Disney in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks, okay? This is what he was saying. It, you know, he's out there pitching Disney with, with the utmost bias, of course, as CEO. But he was saying that they had told subscribers last quarter when things were not as rosy as analysts had looked for, that things were not going to be linear. Their production schedule had been pushed back. As a result of COVID, that pushback in production had less features they were able to release. That brought growth down. When those features came available later in the year, that would spur the growth that they were still looking for longer term. Seems like at least they get to spin that narrative for another 90 days. And when it comes into parks, man, they crushed it in parks, uh, which is why I mentioned that to Kevin. Folks, I was talking about it. 
um, you are going to see a rotation and you're going to see a rotation because these companies deserve a rotation because they're going to get a rotation in business, man. People are ready to break out. You know, young kids was kind of the last area, right? Vaccination rates in young kids, not what they hopefully could be, at least to put it one way, resulting in maybe families being a little bit more cautious than your average person. I had said prior, man, if I did not have unvaccinated kids in my household, after I got my second vaccine late last year, not early last year, right? April or something like that. I think I got my second vaccine last year. I'm talking about 10 months ago. I really would have been open to almost anything. All right. But with young kids in the house being a lot large groups of people. And then you think about Disney. Disney's full of families with young kids. Of course, that might hamper. I'm an hour from Disney. We would go there a few times a year. Why not? That was not happening. All that demand is going to come back. You're going to see it come back, and you're already seeing it come back ahead of expectations. Sales, $21.8 billion. Quite a number in there. The Parks Division generated almost $2.5 billion in operating income. That was versus a loss a year earlier. Revenue from the resorts unit doubled from the lows during the pandemic. They got a bunch of new services. Genie Plus, I have not heard of this one, a system that allows guests to pay an extra fee to jump the shorter lines for rides. I will say this, man, um, whether it's at Bush Gardens as well, they really get you in all the fees because it's a tough one when you spend a day at the park and some of the rides, you got to wait an hour to get on. I mean, you do that. That's one eighth of your day potentially right there that you're waiting. You pay the fee. Not everyone can pay. And I understand, but you understand why they're able to charge those fees because the lines are just crazy. New subscribers, 11.8 million. Market was looking for 8.17. That was a lofty expectation considering they had missed kind of the last time. And you had Netflix come out and miss in between those. Uh, and as they say, Disney shares tumbled in November after the company announced subscriber numbers fell short. Um, streaming losses, $593 million, increasing in programming, marketing, and technology costs. I mean, the cool deal is, right, you're losing direct-to-consumer $600 million, you're making $2.6 billion, okay? Profit in the traditional TV unit, you're dropping 13%, that's quite a number, but you're still making $1.5 billion. Right? You add up the traditional TV unit, 1.5, with the parks, you're talking about $4 billion in straight out profit. That is quite a price tag when you think you compare it to the companies like Netflix that does not have that part of their business, um, parks, and once they start doing the theaters, because theaters, they still lost 98 million. Theaters are not back yet for part of the reason I'm probably talking about. But guess what? That's probably right around the corner as well, because people are going to come out of this last wave, folks. Hopefully, um, things go as people would expect, as in they come out of the last wave, a lot of people, whether it's your children, whether it's yourselves, uh, you're feeling much more comfortable. You've been exposed to the virus. We're all probably going to get exposed to eventually. Hopefully you were vaccinated or we're able to make it through and we're on the other side and that's it. So I'm going to be looking forward to the conversation on Fast Market with Expedia. Expedia, yeah, you're seeing it, folks, these travel stocks. You're pushing all-time highs. This company, not even negative today uh, on a day when we got the S&Ps down 1% and we got the NASDAQ 100 down 1.5%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back, take a look at some of the other equities with action today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Pretty remarkable how relentless this market is, folks. We are now down just 36 points right now, and we just popped from that opening bell. You're talking about 27 points approximately. We're negative by 7 tenths percent in the S&P. You're negative by 4 tenths percent only in the Dow and the NASDAQ, negative 1.3 percent. You're talking about a pop. Uh, about 100 points in the NASDAQ 100 from those levels. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon down 1.3% right now. You got Microsoft shares down 2.2%. There's a pullback for you, about almost uh, $8 from 311 to 303 and change. From Microsoft, we jump over to Apple shares. Apple down a percent. Anytime you get the NASDAQ 100 was pushing 2%, just like that, you're going to have the big stocks down. Tesla down 1.1%, but getting a little bit of a pop. And it seems like this market just turned. I mean, you jump over to all the stocks. Disney down 5.5. But I mean, check out like Uber that was getting hammered. Even with strong earnings, you were down to 4040. You jump up to almost to 4198. Some of the other companies that were getting hampered on their earnings, bouncing back, you had MGM down to almost 47, up to 4836. Mattel, look at that pop from almost 23 and change up to pushing 25 session highs as the market recalibrating here in dramatic fashion, I'd say. Look at crude popping back. Let's see how notes and bonds are trading. They don't give it back, though. This market is aware, folks, that higher rates are coming. Hikes are coming. Seven or eight of them are coming. The market knew that prior to this number. It's still happening. It's just much more confident in that. And yes, there is a risk that we get 50 basis points in March. But is there a, a, a dramatic shift if we get eight hikes versus seven or nine versus eight even over the next two years? I'm just giving you the case because you're seeing it right now as this market is bouncing with the S&P is only down 33 points at 45.44. All right. I mentioned Uber. We jump over to Uber. We have Uber in my newsletter as well as Disney. You spiked to 44 on their numbers last night. Now, Uber had already gotten uh, a lift. No pun intended. No, Lyft had their numbers Tuesday. So Uber traded higher. On some of the Lyft number action, you had Uber up 4%, I think, yesterday coming into their numbers. You had Lyft up 6% yesterday, I think, following their announcement on Tuesday. You actually traded lower, but then accelerated higher from about 41 to close out the session at 45 for Lyft. So Uber out with their numbers yesterday, holding on to about 4% gains. Revenue, I mean, when you compare it to a year earlier, it's just uh, not really fair comparisons increasing 83%. First quarter outlook tempered by Omicron effects. Uh, you talk about 
5.8 billion though versus 5.4, quite a beat percentage wise in what they're talking about. Uh, while the Omicron variant began to impact our business in late December, mobility is already starting to bounce back. This was a huge one, talking about that they already saw that. Uh, that was the CEO out there said in a statement noting that gross bookings are up 25% in the most recent week from just a month earlier. Okay, quite a rebound indeed. Now, shares jumped as much as 9.5%, but they're up only 4% right now. In terms of delivery has grown to compromise a majority of Uber's gross bookings. You got delivery in pink, you got mobility in black. I mean, talk about creating a whole section of your business that's actually the biggest section of the business, right? Uber was starting as a ride-sharing business. They said, hey, why don't we use all these drivers and start delivering food? Lyft did not do the same thing. Now, more than half of Uber's business, even right now, is delivery. Uh, and you see freight in there, 4%. That's quite a number when you think about the type of business they do. $25.9 billion in gross bookings. Uh, Food delivery and freight. Yeah, that's all of it in there. Gross bookings. I believe they had more active users than ever before. That's the last one I was trying to get into here. I'll try and find those active users because Lyft was missing on the active users front, but I believe Uber beat in there as well. Nonetheless, trading higher, you're up about 4.4% on Uber. We jump back to Disney, up about 5.7%. Okay, what we also got this morning was jobless numbers fell by more than forecast last week to 223,000. As long as this number stays between 200 and 250,000, it's kind of a non-factor uh, as that's not a huge impact. You're going to get a lot of volatility right now. It's a very strong number to have a weekly churn of between two to 250. That's what you get in a healthy economy anyway. Uh, and you're seeing that number continuing claims. 1.62 million unchanged for the week ended January 29th. Claims have been falling for the past few weeks as the labor market gets back on track from the spread of Omicron on an adjusted basis. Initial claims, 228,000 last week is what you're dealing with. All right, what else we got up here? Yeah, this was an interesting one. So Salesforce, now we have some Salesforce in my newsletter as well. So I am giving you the bull case here as well. Quite a pullback for Salesforce, uh, a strong cloud company. You are very prone to the interest rates on this one, that's for sure. And that is part of the reason why you just had this equity go from 311 uh, down to 126. Not the only reason though, they had some big misses, their last earnings in November. Now. You jump over, they got their numbers coming up March 1st uh, for Salesforce. But interesting, when you see a company like this, they're going to have an NFT cloud service. Everybody's getting into non-fungible tokens, folks. Uh, Salesforce, co-CEO and founder Mark Benoit, I believe it is, Benoit, Benoit, um, and Brett Taylor spoke about the company's vision for an NFT cloud service. The, the discussion came during an online sales kickoff Wednesday. Um, the director, a director of market strategy at Salesforce predicted in December blog host that 2022 would be a big year for NFTs. I mean, that's exciting, folks. You're in a strong growth company that's in the cloud. I would love for them to get into crypto, especially if they do it well, which I imagine that company may. Now, when you think about NFTs, all right, non-fungible tokens, I understand almost nothing about NFTs. But at least I'm smart enough to understand what I don't understand, which is that it has potential, folks, in huge fashion. Because even understanding something as simple as stock ownership, financial transactions, right? You think about areas that have waste in them, the process can be um, made better, to put it in simple terms. Imagine... You have a company like TFNN. I think I've talked about this example on the air before. You want to go public, okay? TFNN wants to go public. We issue 100 shares of TFNN. Each share represent one, represents 1% 1 ownership in the country, company. Each share has a number, okay, from 1 to 100. You know if you own a share, it's got a share from 1 to 100 because we have 100 shares open. You own that share. Well, guess what? Maybe we make an NFT, and each NFT uh, is on the Ethereum blockchain, okay? And it is a, basically a picture with a TFNN logo, a tiger, and then a number from one to 100. And you can buy and sell those NFTs, which basically are shares of ownership in a corporation on the Ethereum blockchain. There's no reason why, just to illustrate, now regulators are gonna be all over this, et cetera, okay, as they should. But just understanding that the technology is available to do massive things. And you might think NFTs are just 
pictures or maybe they're just tokens, right? They're selling for $500,000, they are. But when I just start understanding simple concepts like that, where, okay, but then what if you have basically pictures that represent something? Maybe they represent actual tokens, tokens of ownership, tokens of ownership from many different things. Uh, and that's just the simplest example that somebody can tell you that knows nothing about the business, let alone the brilliant people that are in that sector. And how about this market, folks? We're going to get green. Are we going to get green by the time I'm off the air in about seven minutes? We might, folks. We're on that pace as the s and now down just 25 points. Stay tuned. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome back. We get the S&Ps down just 22, NASDAQ down just 130, this market plowing higher. We got the NASDAQ 100. You're up 170 points almost. No, you're pushing almost 200 points off the lows right now, and you're only within about 85 points of breaking that 15,000 mark. We jump back to the note and bond action. So interesting that the move you get in notes and bonds holds, but the market rebounds. It's telling you, folks, the market knows the moves are coming in the notes and bonds. They're handling that rebound. You might trade a little bit lower, but there was not a huge shift in the sentiment as the market is beginning to understand and cannot deny that rates are coming, man. They're coming fast. They're coming seven or eight of them, and they're probably coming four in a row at least starting in March. Let's jump around to some of those companies with the earnings. Disney up 5.4%. We got Uber right now up 5%. Now, Coca-Cola 
also out with their numbers. A little bit of volatility, up 1.5%, out with their numbers this morning. You jump over to Pepsi shares. Pepsi also out with their numbers, down 1.3% right now. You spike to 167.30, you're trading 169.64. We take a look at Expedia as they have their numbers tonight. You just traded to 200 for the first time ever on Expedia numbers. Uh, we also get Zillow Group, I believe. ZG, I think they traded Z and ZG, is that right? Z. G, analyze, yeah, so they are out with their numbers, $7, there's a move for you, $7.47 uh, for a $48 stock priced into it. They'll be out with their numbers, and uh, that is after the bell and a firm, that's right, AFRM is a firm. Yeah, and there's a move for you as well. How about 20% almost? $14 move priced into a firm earnings right now. You're up $2. You're up 2.2%. You take a look at this thing. As I said, quite the pullback from 176 uh, A firm. They will be out with their numbers after the bell. Check out Fast Market, folks. They'll be talking about Expedia, a firm as well, uh, and they wrap it up with one more equity in there as well. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. It's going to be an interesting trading day, to say the least. Didn't quite get back to positive, but S&Ps right now, only negative 20. NASDAQ 100, negative 111. The Dow, only negative by 79. And the Russell, closest there, only negative by four. Check out that Russell, folks. Russell, Russell just traded up. 40 points, almost 2%. That is a rebound for you. All right, folks, stay tuned. Basil's up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Thursday, everybody.